Hello, this is Joyce Latimer from Virginia Tech. I'm here today to talk to you a little bit more about comparing liner soaks and liner drenches. And I'd like to thank Fine Americas for sponsoring some of this research as well as sponsoring this video so that I can share it with you. I'd also like to thank eGro for hosting the videos. Back in the spring I shared with you some of our research on concise liner soaks and liner drenches on Agastache blue boa. You can see that the liner drench caused slightly more growth reduction than the liner soak. The volume of our liner drench was based on the guideline of a 10% leachate for a drench. All of these plants were irrigated the night before the application of our treatments. So we wanted to examine this a little further, see if we were consistent in getting a greater response to liner drenches than to liner soaks. Now to be clear, these treatments are made to the liners before they are potted, typically the day before they are potted into their final container. So let's look at some other crops. First of all, we did look at blue boa again in the spring, again using a one part per million liner soak or liner drench of concise. And you can see that again, our liner drench seemed to give us more control than the liner soak. This is two weeks after treatment, two weeks after potting. This is four weeks after potting. You can see that our liner drench is still giving us more growth control than the liner soak. Let's look at Salvia garanitica. Again, a one part per million liner soak or liner drench of concise at two weeks after application. Not much difference, but maybe the liner soak is a little more effective. At four weeks after, again, it still looks like the liner soak is a little more effective in growth control. And then at seven weeks after application, our finish time, you can see that they're about the same, but maybe the drench is a little more effective. So maybe there's not much difference there. So when you talk about making a comparison between liner soaks and liner drenches, it's really going to come down to volume. You can decide what volume you want to apply. Remember that that volume, whether it's what you take up during the soaking or the retention of the drench fluids, is affected by plant water status. And the volume that you apply also affects the growth response. So what's going to be critical to using liner drenches over a large area is going to be to develop a consistent application method such as irrigating the night before and a consistent volume for the liner drench itself. Determine an effective rate once you determine the volume you're going to be applying. In summary, I think we can get the same response from a liner soak and a liner drench. You're just going to have to pay attention to the details to get the response you want from either one of those application tools. So thank you for joining us for more on liner soaks versus liner drenches. Again, thanks to Fine Americas and to eGrow. Have a great day.